mention for children is a special blessing. Bishop Athanasius is grace graduated from Holy Cross back in the early 2000s, or the late 1990s, the late 1990s, and then he served as a missionary priest from Kenya, he's originally from Kenya, and he served for a decade or more in South Africa, serving for the, the Greek parishes there, and then trying to reach out to the uh, South African people with the Orthodox faith. And then in 2013, he was asked to go come back to Kenya to teach at the Makario Seminary, of which he graduated from. While he was in South Africa, he received his doctoral degree. He came back in Kenya in 2015, and then was elevated as bishop in a newly created diocese in Western Kenya, which is one of the most vibrant and dynamic areas in Kenya. For those who don't know, Kenya is the country with the most Orthodox Christians in Sub-Sahara Africa. I read it, a million, a million believers, Orthodox Christians, and his diocese, maybe you can tell us something about your diocese and something about your ministry. So we welcome you, your grace. Thank you so much. Uh, my dad and for Reverend uh, Father Luke, Parish Council, Chapters, Choir, Brothers and Sisters, and all God goes to God. I greet you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Christ is in our midst. I thank you again, Father and all of you for welcoming me here and of course welcoming the Patriarchate of Alexandria here which I represent and before I say anything I would like also to give uh, uh, my thanks to His Eminence uh, Bishop Demetrius and uh, His Eminence Metropolitan Methodist who I served uh, with uh, when I was here as a deacon for four years, and we have a very close, uh, close relationship with him and also his family. And all of you for giving me your blessings to come and be in this country and serve in this in this in this uh, metropolis, this archdiocese, and particularly in this parish. And again, I come uh, with me with the blessing and. Uh, the greeting of our Pope and Batia of Alexandria, North Africa, who also gave me permission. I spoke with him before I left to be able to come and uh, learn from you because I have nothing much to share. <clears throat> uh, let me finish that. Uh, I'll just talk something small how I need to talk about how I knew Father Luke. And uh, I don't know if he, he remembers, but I still remember that. Um, I was, I think, second year, if not first year student in the seminary in Nairobi. I just got there. And the OCFC team, it was my first time to hear much about the OCFC. Uh, by then, uh, we had, uh, I think, the, the person who was in charge was uh, now Bishop Mitchell's to Um And uh, there was a there was a team coming, students from Holy Cross, the academy, for the first time to hear Holy Cross. And uh, by then, I, I think Father Nekir Father was with Father, and they came as young students, uh, and Presbyter, I think, came with them, but by then they were not, uh, uh, they were not married uh, with Father Luke, there were still four of them students. And we came, and as students, we got excited, and we, trying to interact with the visitors and trying to ask how is uh, America and all this. By that time, America was a dream. We could just hear it and just by mentioning the word and getting support from the United States, you felt great. You felt more important than people in the village. Uh, that was the, the thing by then. But then something happened to Alexa that when we were talking with Father, uh, he gave me, I think it was a t-shirt from Holy Cross, and he gave me another shirt, uh, which uh, uh, this was like a cushion, which I still have up to now. And, and, and that uh, kind of uh, thing uh, made me to feel that uh, 
The Orthodox is a very special because someone can come from far and leave you with his blood. And that cemented our relationship. And those who are still there, I have given out that they still have them because they remind me of, of our relationship as well before even we got to and we kept in touch. And actually, they, they made me to be more interested at Holy Cross, especially the t shirt that I was given, you gave me, which was written on Holy Cross School of Theology. And uh, the rest of his history, and now I ended up at Holy Cross, and finally I've ended up here to celebrate with him in his parish for the first time. And uh, thank you so much, Father. That is, uh, it looks something small. But it changed, it gave me, uh, it created a very great impact as a young student from the village who had just joined the seminary, trying to learn about orthodoxy, trying to learn about theology, everything mixed up, trying to find myself uh, during that particular time. Having said that, uh, as you might have heard, or as you heard the father say, uh, um, currently the servant. Um, of the Holy Diocese of Kisuma, Northwestern Kenya, which is about three years old. Um, we have about, I have about, uh, under me, about 120 priests, um, about 60-70 uh, thousand Orthodox faithful, those that we know. We haven't done the statistics properly, maybe a bit more. And, um, of course, almost about uh, 400, 500 parishes all together. Um, the Diocese of Kisumu is a totally indigenous parish because we, apart from uh, Dr. Black, who is there, all the priests and the people, there are people from the same area, people from that locality. Um, it is the, the diocese that is far removed from the capital. It's far removed from the capital of Nairobi. So it's much, much, much within the villages. And Father actually came and uh, stayed there for some time. And uh, during the time of the construction of the, the clinic, uh, which is now the health center of uh, St. Mark Chabogere, which also his father, by then, Father Zorja Prince's father, Father Alexander Rodnes, was part of the first team that came to build that uh, clinic there. And uh, therefore, is, uh, we have tried, uh, we, when we ended there, beside uh, a few things, I don't want to say that we didn't have anything, but we didn't have the background on how to start, we didn't have an office, we didn't have anything that uh, a person requires as an administrator to do anything, but thank God, by the grace of God, your prayers as well, uh, we have a uh, complete office with the staff. Uh, we have um, two monasteries that we have established, one for men, one for women. And uh, I always touch to the spiritual side. And uh, um, by the time I go back, we are sending our first lot of novices, men and women, to Mahera in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in Cyprus. And others will send them to Mount Athos and others to other established monasteries to go and get more to learn more and come back as a way of preparing also the hierarchy, especially among men. We, we, I will not be there forever, and even now the diocese is big. We need people who will be, come from the monastic, well prepared, so that when the time comes to take over, we get people from the monastics, because now we have that chance to be able to do that. Um, we have also uh, established some schools, the ones we found, we have established some, and, uh, and many other things that uh, I will uh, 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 say everything here. Uh, but definitely, generally, in three years now, we are able, we have laid the foundation a bit that we need to have, and we have two orphanages. Uh, one orphanage, uh, we have a school inside which we have just begun, which is operating. The orphanage of Santa Vita, we have been there about 30, 30 children from various communities. And we have another orphanage in Kisi, which uh, just opened on that side also because of uh, HIV and normal, whatever. Many children are left without parents, and so we try to 
help him to be to see how we can help, but also we keep them in contact with the guardians that we make sure that we, we don't disconnect them completely from their, their families. Uh, so those are some of the things that uh, uh, that we have done, and uh, and and of course the other things that uh, maybe later on, I, I, whether we want to be able to explain on what. Uh, we have been able uh, to do, but as well, we have maintained close relationship with other bishops in, the, in Kenya. Because we have one bishop, now we have three, and we have tried to maintain a close relationship with, uh, with all other bishops so that we, we maintain also the spirit of unity of the Orthodox Church that has been there for over uh, 2,000 years. Uh, of course, uh, for the transportation, uh, we have, we did have the, when I went there, I was using the bicycle, uh, and uh, sometimes I could take motorbike, we didn't have anything, uh, and now, with by the grace of God, we have uh, somewhere how we can move from one place to another, because the Dallas is the biggest, you know, in the whole country, the Dallas of Kisum is the biggest. It goes the, the border of Kenya, Sudan, and Somali, the border of Kenya and Uganda, the border of Kenya and Tanzania, it takes the whole of uh, half of Kenya, actually, half of Kenya is on my side. So it's a very big diocese that up to Trukana, for those who know Trukana, it goes up to there. <coughs> Therefore, the need for transport was very important, so we tried to get, and uh, now we have the transport. And now, for the sake of women and mothers who give birth, and there's a problem to go to the hospitals, whatever. Uh, we just acquired the uh, Delos's uh, minibus before I left, which will be able to help us also to cut costs and uh, when the team comes, but also to be able to help uh, our members, especially mothers who want to give back in the villages and there's no transport, we are able to rush there and be able to help and other uh, issues of uh, transportation. As you may be aware that uh, in Africa, transportation is the headache that is there to move from one place to another and so on. So those are the far of uh, 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 achievements, uh, I can say that uh, by the grace of God we have achieved. Uh, in the last those three years, I didn't want to come and speak problems, but it comes good to speak of what we have done so far, and then the rest I leave it to your hands. Um, Father had asked me also uh, to speak about, uh, and if there is any question regarding Africa, regarding the Dalsis, please feel free to ask me uh, by the blessing of Father, whatever time I am now, I am available now. So, uh, Father had asked me to talk about also the teaching the Gospel of today, which was actually is very interesting. The way it portrays God. It is so, so interesting, it's so full of mission theme within it, in the Gospel that we read today, of uh, Luke uh, chapter 8, 5 to 15, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, if we look, the way Luke puts it, you know, Luke was, uh, Luke took to the namesake of Father Luke, he was a painter, besides being a medical doctor, physician, he was also a painter. If we go through the, uh, the, 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 the one of the portraits that we read, of which we depict Luke as the painter who painted, uh, and uh, when we are singing, I think in August, uh, uh, during the time we are, we are anticipating the, the Domitian of Christ, there's a stanza which we, we read and it talks about Luke as the painter. Um, and Luke, even in, in his painting, you see that in all his Gospels, as much as we last we read uh, about the, the woman who was from the, the woman whose son had died, the only son, and was not a Jew, was coming from outside, and Jesus meets him and uh, he stops the bear and he heals the woman. The other time we see something else. And look, in, if you read this Gospel, unlike others, he tries to paint. The picture. He tries to draw the picture by the use of words to be able to make you understand what he's uh, talking about. But look in all his things, 
from where we started about to look up to here now, according to my own understanding, of course you might have your own way of interpretation, is that uh, Luke paints the picture of God who doesn't get tired. The God who is not tired with his people. He paints the picture of the God of love whose love is beyond the boundaries of a specific kind of tribe or specific kind of people. He paints the God whose love is just beyond the Jewish community where religion or Christianity or Jesus Christ was born. We saw last, he healed the widow, he healed the son of the widow who was not even a Jew from a known community of nine. And that's the only time that it appears in the Bible, the very unknown. And he healed and provided. Oh, that woman was also a woman who what was against the custom. So look, when he paints this picture, he paints the picture of a God who has moved from the closet where he had been locked by the, the, the traditions and whatever that were there that you should not do this. The God who comes out of the box and tries to reach each and everyone, irrespective of what the, 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 the frailty, the, the, the weakness, and the, where that particular person comes. The God who destroys all the boundaries because of his love. And this continues even today. When we see that he paints the picture, and there's always a reason which I, I don't want to go, how Luke, how Luke ends, how, and how Luke comes to, to, to say this part of Jesus Christ. There was a question which had been asked, there was a concern which had been asked, and for, 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 to respond to this, Luke brings this picture of Jesus Christ and the sower and whatever we have had today. And we, we, we when he starts, he starts very well. There was a sower. He didn't use the term a farmer. And we need to really see why he didn't use, he didn't use the term farmer. He uses the term sower. The farmer is more organized. The farmer will not throw his, uh, he's more organized, he will not throw his seeds enough. He will have a particular place, he fences, he makes it look nice, and he puts these seeds. That's the farmer. The sower on the other side, he's a farmer, yes, but he, he broadcasts. That was the tradition of the, the country, broadcast seeds and we were expecting of where they fall. With the hope that wherever they fall, they will get changed. But also with the hope, with the belief that not all of them will be received in a fertile soil. But he spreads and knows. But he broadcasts anyway. This picture, it is the picture of God's love. It's the picture in which, even though God knows, He's aware that not all of us will receive this word. Some of us will receive and die out. Some of us will be on the road. Some of us, He knows very well. But he doesn't choose the best one and put the seed. He broadcasts like this person. With the, and he continues, even if it dries, he continues. He does not give up. And throughout the centuries, throughout the centuries, the church has portrayed this love. And that's why you, who is not a Jew, was not born in Jerusalem during the time of I, who was born in Africa. The seed was broadcasted, it was thrown. It was thrown, it was not done in order. It was thrown like that, like broadcast. Sometimes it's fell in Africa, we were resistant a bit. It continued to do again. It's fell here, sometimes we became resistant, but we con it continued until the seed has grown. It is therefore, us as a representative of Christ, to broadcast. We should not worry that people will receive it or not. That those are sinners, they will not take it. Those are whatever. Those we shouldn't give up. We shouldn't give up on the love. We shouldn't give up on being doing nice. 
We shouldn't give even if that nice falls sometimes on a rock that people don't recognize. <coughs> even if that nice people trample upon it. As they say, do it anyway. And that's the, the whole thing I took from a different. Of course, they say, they explain, they say, those who don't hear, those who don't hear. But then the question comes Did God throughout history give up on those who did not receive his message? What did he do? He continued through to spread, to broadcast through prophets, through teachings, through all. And finally, through Jesus Christ, who was his son who came down to the earth and who died for everyone. Those on the rocks, those in the thorns, those in the fertile land, those who whatever, he died for them all. He's broadcasted the seed for all of them. It is the duty of us as, as Christians that when we go out there, we shouldn't only look those who are nice orthodox that we would preach to them. Sometimes let us just do to everybody. And let us not worry. That is not our worry. Like when the, the, the sower so went to spread the, the seeds, yes, he knew that some could not. But it was not his worry. Because he is not the one who makes things to grow. He we just spread the seeds, and God makes the seed, the seed to grow. We shouldn't worry where the seed falls. Because it's not our duty. It is not a, we can't, we don't have that power. We have the power to spread and to share the word of God. And God takes it from there to make that word to grow to grow at his own appointed time. But our work is never ever to give up. Never ever to give up on loving, on caring, on spreading what is right, what is justice, what is love. Even to those people who don't and don't recognize justice, because one day they will. And we should remember that even us, there was a day we were rocks. There was a day we were thorns. We could not receive what we have been told. But the persistence, the love, the not giving up has brought us where we are. To children, to parents, never give up even if you teach the child and you feel the child is not listening and you get so upset and you say, don't ever give up. Continue praying, continue giving what you give, continue loving the parent, your worker and anybody. A time will come and a time has come and a time came that finally you are seed which you are planting in a small way that you can. You don't need to do big things. The small way that you can, the seed you are planted, it will germinate. And we have this God who is God of miracles, that He can make even the, the plants to grow on the rocks. So we shouldn't feel that the rocks will always, God can make even on the rocks the plant to grow and the good thing to come out of that. God can make the fertile soil also to be able to, to grow. That's my own, uh, I think I've taken the very opposite interpretation which you know about this gospel. It talks about the love of God, that God spreads his love without being careful who he's spreading to. He loves everybody, and even those in the thorns, and those in the rocks, and those in the fertile soil, all belongs to him, and he spreads his sin. And I wish you all the best, and may God bless you, and God bless you.